Hey, Mindful Now Finders. This is Tia Ho bringing you the first video in a series of, of these related to neuroscience, mindfulness, and your brain body, the human system. So today I'm going to talk about the wonder of the vagus nerve. And it is one of my favorite elements. In, it's part of the brain body connection. Um, this is a fabulous artist rendition of the vagus nerve. Vagus means wanderer in Latin. And your vagus nerve innervates a whole slew of different organs and pieces of your body. It's the longest cervical nerve in your body. It comes out of the cervix, cervical portion of your skull, your brain here, or your spine, excuse me. Um, and it goes into your face. It's partly related to taste. It has um, motor neurons in it that help um, basically move things uh, through your like esophagus. It helps with peristalsis in your digestion. Um, it's part of your ability to hear and it touches, it connects to your lungs and your heart and your diaphragm and every single organ in your body. So um, I'm not going to be able to talk about all of the things the vagus nerve does or is responsible for, but the, the reason that I'm bringing it up in the concept of mindfulness is because the vagus nerve help, helps initiate your body's relaxation response. So you know you've got your parasympathetic nervous system and your sympathetic nervous system. So your sympathetic nervous system is what I call your stress response system. So when you need to fight, flight, or freeze, your sympathetic nervous system has you covered. And when you need to recover from those situations, that's, the, that's pretty much the role of the parasympathetic nervous system. It's also called your rest and digest system. So one of the cool things I, I, you can see in this little diagram here, are some of the things I just mentioned about, you know, it's touching all of these different elements of inside of you. So when you have like a gut sense or a gut feeling, that's because you have actual sensory nerves, sensory fibers innervating your guts and sending that sensory information back up through your vagus nerve up to your brain. I think that's amazing. So your vagus nerve can actually help lower your blood pressure and slow your heart rate, and it can slow your breathing down as well. Let's look a little bit at that, right? So your vagus nerve is kind of like it's listening all the time to what's happening with your breathing and your heart. And your, your body, you know, we forget this, but we're alive, right? So that life that it, sometimes I think about it as like this universal wisdom that's beyond us, inside of us, we're part of it, it's connected to us, we're connected to it. That wisdom is inside of us all the time. It's kind of what I think of as our innate resiliency. So your breathing is happening without you having to tell it to. Now there's a bunch of science behind that but below the science, to me, this is this concept of aliveness, right? So even though your breathing is going to happen as long as you're in this body, um, you can also direct your awareness to change some of that breathing process. So when you breathe in, signals go from your lungs through the nerve, this vagus nerve, into your brain. And when you breathe out, the brain sends information back through that nerve to your heart. And it tells it to slow down or speed up, partly based on how fast that exhalation is happening. So when you exhale, that's what helps turn on the relaxation response. It's when your vagus nerve gets the most activated. And... The cool thing about this is that you can direct your awareness, you can direct your attention to your breathing at any time. So there was a research study here where they studied a bunch of people meditating and a bunch of people praying and found out that in these sets of people, there was sort of this most calm way of breathing. And that kind of averaged out to six breaths a minute. And that's basically five seconds in and five seconds out. So what you can do is you can actually nudge your parasympathetic system through your vagus nerve to come online a bit. 
and help your sympathetic nervous system dial it down a notch. That doesn't mean you're going to get rid of stress. It doesn't mean you're going to get rid of anxiety. I'm not trying to make feelings you don't like go away. That's not what this is about. This is really just you recognizing that you have some innate resiliency built into your system and that you can also support that resiliency inside of you with your awareness. So let's do this. Let's try it out, right? So we can just exhale everything out. And again, that's you sending a signal to your, your brain like, hey, we're going to bring on the parasympathetic nervous system a little bit here. So I'm going to exhale everything out. I'm going to inhale for the count of five and exhale for the count of five. And I'm going to think to five in my head. So I'm going to exhale. Inhale. I'll try to get all the air way up into the tippy toppies of my lungs. And then exhale. Sometimes it's a lot longer than five seconds. That's okay. Man, it makes it feel so much different, right? For me, I can just feel the, I can feel the amount of oxygen <laughs> hitting my system with that type of a breath, the measured breathing. But you don't have to do the measured. You don't have to count. You can just do one slow, long, deep breath. And when you do that, you're actually pulling in a really needed support for your body, which is oxygen. And this actually reduces the oxygen demands of your heart muscle. It slows your heart down, lowers your heart rate because you've just given it a whole bunch of oxygen. This is also what happens if you just stay in that sort of calmer breathing on purpose for a little while. So if you want to try a deep breath, I invite you to do that. This is just again, um, kind of you playing a little bit with your awareness, uh, your attention, and kind of this innate resiliency that's already built into your system. I would love it if you tried one of these out and tell me what you notice. Um, I'm just curious to hear. So in any of these videos, I'm always going to point back to one of three concepts. And this is these are called the three principles. They're developed by this guy, Sidney Banks, and he uses different words for them. This is just how I make sense of them. So the, these three concepts are basically that you're alive, you have this constant innate resiliency or this inner wisdom that's built into you. You're aware that you're alive and you can direct your attention and your awareness. We do this with mindfulness all the time, but it happens throughout your day. It's partly why I try to integrate mindfulness everywhere, right? So as soon as you're, you're keyed into your aware self, you can use, your aware self can use your attention and awareness to do different things. And you experience thought. Now, I base a lot of my understanding of neuroscience from a relatively new neurological paradigm developed by Le Dr. Lisa Feldman Barrett called the theory of constructed emotion. And basically, without getting really deep into it, your brain body is generating these thought feel experiences on demand as needed based on prior experiences. And these change on their own because you're alive and you're having new experiences all the time. And they also change based on your input because you can direct attention and awareness. So I'm just letting you know that I'm going to be talking about these in future videos. Here's a set of references. If you're curious, you can always replay this. Um, feel free to forward that email if you think other folks would want to see this. This is all free content. This is just a teaser of some of the information I'm going to be putting together in a future co content um, course and possibly an intensive that is accompanying uh, a set of in-depth mindfulness walks, nature-based. Have a good one, everybody, and I will talk to you later. Bye.